So we are live. Anytime you want to start, we can start. If they have to join, nobody has joined. Yeah, they will join. Yeah. Welcome, Saranendu. Yes, sir. We are already live. Okay. Welcome back, Jent. We are already live. What you have to start your video as well as audio? Yeah. Yes, we are waiting for Rajiv Shah. Yes, Dr. Gurunath. This is Dr. Samantha from Calcutta. Namaskar. Good evening, sir. Dr. Gurunath from Cholapur. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, now Good evening, everybody yes, sir. Behind. Good evening. Chalo. Good evening. Raju, sir. Good evening. Ashok, it's not still on Ortho TV. Ashok. I have done it now, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Good evening, everybody. At the outset, let me apologize for the delay in this meeting due to some technical issues. I welcome all of you for this one talk, one speaker series, talk by Dr. Rajiv Shah from Vadodara about neglected fractures of the ankle and hind foot, which includes all fractures around the talus, calcaneum, as well as ankle. So that we'll be discussing in three parts today. To introduce our speaker today, Dr. Rajiv Shah, he has done advanced foot and ankle fellowships under world-renowned foot and ankle surgeons like Dr. Thomas Lee, Greg Bridlett, and Will at Columbus in USA as well as in Chicago in USA. He is the first foot and ankle specialist surgeon from India. He established the first ever foot and ankle center and also launched the first ever foot and ankle website from India. Dr. Rajiv Shah is the foot and ankle surgeon to Honorable Governor of Gujarat State. He is the Executive Council member of Global Foot and Ankle Community. He was the Vice Chairman of Asia Pacific Foot and Ankle Council, that is a chapter under Asia Pacific Orthopedic Association. He was the Vice President Asia Pacific Society for Foot and Ankle Surgery, that is Asia Pacific Society for Foot and Ankle Surgery, International Advisory Board Member, and South Asia Coordinator for Foot Innovate International Webinars. He has many things to his credit. He, the president, he was the president of Indian Foot and Ankle Society in 2014-15, National Chairman of Indo-US Foot and Ankle Courses, Co-Chairman of Parek, Parek African Foot and Ankle Courses since 2014. He's on the member on the editorial board of Journals of Asia Pacific Foot and Ankle Surgery, reviewer for foot and ankle section for four index medical journals worldwide. Successfully has carried out more than 3,500 surgeries on patients from, apart from India, from other countries like USA, UK, Gulf, etc. He has authored chapters in 10 international books on the subject of foot and ankle orthopedics. And he also written the chapter in the Indian Orthopedic Association approved traumatology book, that is the textbook of orthopedics. 
He has own book titled Handbook of Foot and Ankle Orthopedics, published by Timi Publications, and that received in 2014-15 Best Orthopedic Book Award. He also is the writer of the award-winning book Handbook of Foot and Ankle Orthopedics, which is translated into many foreign languages like Portuguese, Chinese, and Arabic languages. Friends, Dr. Rajiv Shah is an entrepreneur and he is the first person who has done corporate work and he has started three hospitals which are in the name of Sunshine Hospital, Global Hospitals. Two are, of them are in Vadodara and one of them is in Surat. So together these three hospitals put together have more than 600 beds and he is the owner of them. And he, he, this is not part of his CV he has sent. I have added from my own knowledge about that because I had an opportunity to closely travel with him for one of the conference somewhere in Bihar. So we traveled together from Patna uh, for about six hours. We were in a car together. So that's the reason why I know all this. And he's a very busy orthopedic surgeon, not only treating foot and ankle surgeries, managing these three corporate hospitals. Today, we have little change in the format. We have panelist speakers also to ask questions. We have Dr. Swarnendu Samantha from Calcutta, Dr. Jain Sen from Jaipur, and Dr. Gurunath Vache from Solapur, apart from our own Ortho TV people, Dr. Neeraj Bijlani and Ashok Sham. Dr. Swarnendu Samantha is a consultant at PLS Hospital, Kolkata. His areas of interest are pelvic acetabular trauma, arthroscopy, and arthroplasty. He is the current sitting secretary of Indian Orthopedic Arthroscopy Society. He is associated with AO since many years, and he is a DNB faculty and examiner also. Dr. Gurunath Vache from Sholapur, my own colleague, he is a consultant foot and ankle surgeon at Sholapur. He is working as associate professor in orthopedics in the government, Dr. Vaishampayan Memorial Government Hospital. He was a leash of fellow in Singapore in 2002. And he was on the executive board of Indian Foot and Ankle Society for three years from 2015 to 2018. The third person we have Dr. Jain Sen from Jaipur. He's honorary consultant at Santokba Durlabji Memorial Hospital at Jaipur. He's honorary secretary. He was the honorary secretary of Rajasthan Orthopedic Society Association for three years from 2015 to 18. He's also a member on the Center State Relationship Committee of Indian Orthopedic Association for the year 2019 to 20. He has special interest in foot and ankle surgeries. So he has done a lot of fellowship and observerships, even as recently as uh, 2014 and 2019. He visited in 2014 Duke University in USA as foot and ankle observer. And recently, as a British orthopedic traveling fellow for foot and ankle fellowship, he went to England in 2019. I welcome all of you. Last but not the least, my friends, Dr. Neeraj Bijlani and Dr. Ashok Sham the tech savvy orthopedic surgeons from Mumbai who are behind this uh, whole uh, activity. Friends, you can see my mobile number. You can send WhatsApp messages on this number regarding today's discussion. I welcome all of you once again, and I request Dr. Rajiv Shah to share his screen. Welcome, sir. Hello, I hope I hope I am audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You yeah. can go ahead. Very good evening and thank you very much. Thank you very much, moderator, sir, for the kind introduction. And more than a moderator, he is the one who is in our hearts by his innovative knowledge, which he has said. And like Eklabi, we all have been practicing his 
tic tac kind of the technique which introduce him to our hearts of heart and he is going to lead our association that's the most pleasurous news of today uh, sir thank you very much for your kind introduction and thank you our esteemed panelists dr samanto has been a very close friend since my pg courses day and uh, he has taught me a lot of lessons of uh, living the true way how do we live the life uh, dr jansen i call him academic father of rajasthan orthopedic association he has brought rajasthan orthopedic association into a different frame uh, gurunath is the one who is the future of indian foot and ankle society and i had an fortune to share one or two research papers with him neeraj has been my mentor into uh, making me a advanced orthopedic surgeon and dr ashok sham is my mentor with respect to research and they are doing the fantastic work so with this i express my gratitude to all of this panelist and my moderator and let me start uh, with my uh, presentation so i am going to talk on to neglected injuries the first would be the approach the next would be i'll be talking about ankle fractures then calcaneus fractures and lastly talar fractures so how do we define a neglected injury a neglected injury could be absolutely untreated and neglected it could be poorly treated or it could be treated one which is gone for malunion so how do we approach a neglected injury in foot and ankle obviously detailed history treatment records past personal and family history would be first in the history so far as clinical evaluation is concerned you'd want to look at the location of the pain type aggravating relieving factors the kind of deformity and i like to document deformity from proximal to distal and deformity in every plane sagittal plane coronal plane and axial plane and that's what i start documenting i start with the evaluation of the hip knee whenever the deformity is there in the foot and ankle i start proximally go down up to the toes loss of function neurovascular status of the limb position of the skin and scar and radiology so far as is concerned you need every x ray to be standing weight bearing view to note the excess deviation and then you also need long length alignment view which are taken in the ap as well as pa view ct scan sometimes mri and bone scan may be required and obviously your serology and blood investigation would be helpful in the case when you are expecting infected case so what are the management options for neglected ankle and hind foot fractures it could be revision fixation it could be revision plus or minus osteotomy it could be arthrodesis if the damage to the joint is very bad you go in for the arthrodesis but sometimes this arthrodesis could be with an osteotomy to correct the axis of the limb and in cases like ankle you have option of arthroplasty though it is not available in india it is still a possible option what are the factors they influence management of neglected ankle and hind foot injury and these are all the factors which i want to take one after another so age and activity the young age and active lifestyle you would be inclined to do revision fixation or reconstruction than a fusion if it's an old aged patient with a sedentary lifestyle the conservative care would be the choice the young and active prevention of arthritis and correction of deformity are the goal and this has to be done as fast as possible a manual laborer you would like to give solid arthrodesis carried out as a single stage procedure for that only earning member of this society or the family workman compensation issues you have to be very very much watchful with your accents and do explain the prognosis to the patient patients with the comorbidities are not good candidates for surgery if they are to be managed they are to be managed with conservative modalities or at all if you want to go in and do surgery do as 
in less in his invasive surgery as possible neuropathy will require stronger longer combination and joint spanning fixations your implants would be double your protection would be double and your immobilization would be double what i mean by double implants when you might use a nail plus a plate in neuropathy you prefer fusions over fixations which are spanning fusions spanning the other joint duration of the neglected injury if it is less that means there is a better progression and more scope of joint preservation and you could do osteotomy through the original fracture line it would be easier and your reconstruction would also be easy but if there is a joint damage which is with the deformities that is what is seen in the long standing cases so there lot of soft tissue contractures are also common so over and above bony corrections you might require soft tissue corrections deformity and alignment big deformity means more of fusions and less of fixations deformity itself means maximally invasive procedures deformity means additional procedures like osteotomy bone grafting soft tissue release on the concave side and soft tissue plication on convex side status of the joint is very very important if the arthritis is present then it would define the type of procedure if there is no arthritis obviously you may think of doing a, a reconstruction if there is a global arthritis you do arthrodesis if there is a focal arthritis you do reconstruction status of the soft tissue it really do not alter the type of procedure but it would mandate change of the approach and poor soft tissue might require additional reconstructive procedures by your plastic surgical friends neurovascular status if it is poor then surgical intervention is mostly avoided poor bone quality will require augmentation procedures combination fixation locking implants and adjoint aggressive medical management spanning fusions may also be preferred if the bone quality is very poor infection would require stage procedures multiple procedures use of external fixators and ring fixators management of the bony defect as well as soft tissue defect will have to be done in the cases of infection so with this preamble with this introduction of how do we approach a neglected injury in hind foot and ankle i am now going to go with the case based presentation where i am going to also give a message at the end of a case and this is to begin with neglected ankle fracture so this was the fresh trauma in a male aged 48 years it was a close fracture and this is how the ct scan picture showed a fracture of medial malleolus a uh, fracture of the area of the uh, of the tibia where you have an attachment of syndesmotic ligament comminuted fracture of the medial malleolus fracture of the posterior malleolus and this where the ct scan pictures this were the axial ct scan picture and this was the skin condition at the end of 5 to 7 days and this is how this patient was treated and if we analyze this x ray there is shortening of the fibula there is rotation of the fibula the syndesmotic reduction is not done properly there is a mal reduction of the syndesmosis and looking at this particular picture looking at this particular picture when this patient went to second surgeon second surgeon did revision at the end of 6 months and this is how the revision picture looked what next if we have a closer look into what were the failures of the second surgeon again the fibula is short there is a defect or the impression at the ankle joint line the syndesmosis the screws have been passed through the syndesmosis syndesmosis doesn't look well reduced what next obviously this patient required ankle fusion with the transfibular approach a similar case a case number 2 which is a case of my friend dr sampath 
male 48 had a this kind of fracture malunion at the end of six months he presents to a doctor with a pain inability to walk is not a diabetic patient this is how the clinical picture looks like a completely malunited ankle fracture at the end of six months and then ankle fusion was planned a transfibular lateral approach was taken fibula was excised for the transfibular approach and when surgeon went in he saw that the ankle cartilage was excellent so what now are you going to fuse with such a good ankle cartilage obvious answer was no so a reshaping of the fibula was done excision of the callus was done fibula was put in back and then bone grafting and plating was done the length of the fibula was maintained a medial tension bend fixation was done and this were the post fixation images this were the images at the end of two years and this is the function at the end of five years a patient who had six months of malunited ankle fracture was taken for fusion at such a good movement and function at the end of five years so two different cases two different roadmap for a relatively matching situation six months of malunion of ankle in one case where a fusion was changed to revision and in one case a revision was changed into the fusion so that's where the important aspect of a neglected ankle injury comes and that is your radio diagnosis there are eight radiological signs which you are looking into the x-rays and comparing with the opposite side in a case to diagnose that case as a neglected ankle fracture or malunited ankle fracture. There is increased tibiofibular clear space like shown in this picture. On the left side is a normal ankle, the right side is a malunited ankle case. You also have tibiofibular overlap, which is distorted like this in a malunited case. And when you look at the talar tilt angle, that is not zero or less than two. It is totally distorted. A Shenton's line of ankle is also disturbed. And the dime sign, which you see a formation of a ball at the tip of the lateral malleus is also distorted in a malunited case. You have an increased medial clear space in an oblique view and you have a disturbed talocrural angle sign on a, in a malunited case. And this is a relatively uh, less important sign where you have a lateral talar shift which is the uh, fibular inner border. Axial CT images at the joint level are the best diagnostic modality. Very, very rarely you may think of going ahead with MR, but these are the true X-ray signs and MRI, CT scan signs, which is going to give you the diagnosis of malunited ankle fracture. So revision fixation would be the first choice for majority of the ankle malunion, and there is no optimal time for revision fixation. In literature, patients have undergone reconstruction seven years post trauma and they have ended up with a good end result. So always consider revision fixation before fusion. Think about revision fixation before thinking about fusion. So whenever a case of neglected ankle fracture comes to me, I always try to ask this question, where is the deformity? And you try to locate the deformity, the cora, center of rotation angulation. And there are three types of deformity with which a neglected ankle fracture can present. Number one, you have deformity at the level of fracture. So it is a fracture which has blended into pure malunion. So these are the cases which has got pure malunion. And these deformity which are at fracture site, you have to do osteotomy through the malunion and reconstruct the fracture do the revision fixes and that is the tact. When you have a deformity which is at the joint, so sometimes you have an intra-articular fracture with an intra-articular depression or elevation or irregularity, then you need an intra-articular osteotomy which is very, very close to the joint 
you do this osteotomy and then you have uh, uh, plafond plasty as an osteotomy. I am going to come to that. And the third type of deformity, yo, so deformity which is at the joint, you would need something like a intraarticular osteotomy. And when you have deformity which is above the joint line, when you have a fracture which has got extension into the metaphysis, like this case example, you have your deformity above the joint and therein you need osteotomy above the joint mainly, sometimes below the joint, sometimes at both the level. This could be supramalleolar osteotomy, calcaneal osteotomy or both. So this is what we should be able to define with your with our x-rays, clinical evaluation and radiological evaluation. Where is the deformity? Is it at the joint line? Is it above the joint? It is below the joint. So let's talk first about deformity one. So deformity is at the fracture site. We need to correct it at the fracture site. So what is the revision ankle fixation ladder? Paint and drap both the lower limb. This is what I do because it makes your life very easy to compare with the opposites in the same degree of the rotation. Do the implant extraction. All the implants requires to be out. You could be doing it on medial side, lateral side, posterior side. Clear medial, lateral as well as syndesmotic cutters. So you clear it with curettes, with nibblers, with disc punches, with carison punches clean out completely your gutters. And then you do fibular osteotomy, correct the fibula with that osteotomy in form of correction of the rotation or correction of the length of, and correction of the length of the fibula. How do you restore the rotation? Rotation restoration is by internal rotation of the distal fragment with initial posterior placement of the plate. So this is what I want to demonstrate through the speakers that this is the way this has been fixed into, uh, the, the, this fragment is lying into a mal rotation. It is normally into external rotation. So you fix in the plate into that particular rotation and then you rotate the fragment so that your plate comes into the center of the fibula and fix it up. The fibular lengthening, there are two ways you can do it. Suppose this is the case where you have a fibular shortening, you do the osteotomy and fix a plate and put in a AO distractor assembly and gain the length of the fibula. This is how you're going to do it and then fill it up with a bone graft which is harvested from the distal tibia, shaft of the tibia, proximal tibia or iliac crest. The another way is to use a hinterman distractor with the plate fixed onto the distal fragment. You're putting a hinterman distractor and distracting it gradually, cautiously, and monitoring it under CR. So, a uh, wire is placed into a distal and the proximal fragment with a plate fixed into the distal fragment, and you distract and then put in a bone graft and gain the length. A fibular osteotomy should be would be of two types. One oblique fibular osteotomy for a fib malunion, or another is a transverse variety of the osteotomy. Oblique osteotomy is through the original fracture line, so it is anatomic in nature. You don't usually need bone grafting. It is used for the shorter duration of malunion, where you would require less correction. The downside is it is really difficult in osteoporotic fractures. It is very difficult into low fibular fractures and it is not forgiving. So that's about the oblique corrective osteotomy of the fibula. The transverse fibular osteotomy is above the level of the original fracture, above the level of the syndesmosis. Large shortening can easily be corrected. Rotation correction can also be corrected. It is a versatile and user-friendly osteotomy, which you bridge with the bone graft. That is the downside of it. You need bone grafting and it is not useful in a high fibular fracture. But this is the osteotomy, which I like to use for a duration, uh, for a duration which is quite longer and for the fracture, which are very low lying in a very osteoporotic patient. This is the osteotomy, which I like to use. 
So once you do the osteotomy of fibula, restore the length and rotation of the fibula, you temporarily fix the fibula, use a bone graft, and then you do the final fixation of fibula, plus or minus medial malleolus, plus or minus syndesmosis, plus or minus deltoid deconstruction. Once I put in my syndesmotic screw, in every case, I am always going to stress the medial side to look for the integrity of the deltoid ligament. And if it is lax, I might like to immobilize the spade, that patient into a little bit of inversion for six weeks. If it is completely lax in comparison to the opposite side, then I go in and do the deltoid reconstruction. So there could be four specific elements of ankle malunion. And let's discuss these with the cases one after another. Syndesmotic malunion. You have tilting of the talar and medial opening. The question is how late syndesmotic reconstruction can be done. It can be done very late, but more the duration you are reconstructing, more are the chances that that patient might land up into syndesmotic fusion or synostosis. I still try not to give syndesmotic fusion by my, by my attempts. If it happens, it can always be accepted. You need to clear the soft tissues from the syndesmosis. You need to reduce and fix syndesmosis. Fusion can always be done if your fixation fails. And that's why I don't do uh, uh, syndesmotic fusion, even if the case presents to me after nine months or 12 months. So let's see the case. Taller tilt, medial opening in a patient with a malunited ankle with a syndesmotic injury and this was then stabilized with the correction of this of the malunion and with the syndesmotic screw which obviously was not placed into the right position now this was one patient who came with this kind of uh, malunion and look at uh, this can you go back to the previous slide yes uh, sorry okay. for interrupting yes have you done any grafting from the distal medial? No. Yeah. This, what is that? Yeah. yeah. No. So distal this, tibia. Yes. This. This. Yes. Correct. Uh, no. And this is uh, uh, this is somebody else's case where uh, bone grafting probably is done from this place. But this is what I did not like. You okay. Know? Yes. The syndesmotic screw is placed into absolutely wrong direction. It is through the syndesmosis. It has to be between 2 to 4.5 mm above the level of the ankle. It has to be parallel to the ankle. It has to go from posterior to anterior. <clears throat> but I just wanted to show that this is how somebody did correction. Okay. okay. Now, this okay. is the case. Uh, this is my case. So... This is how this patient presented with syndesmotic malunion at the end of four and a half months. And then uh, revision was done. Uh, transverse osteotomy was done. It was distracted with the intermittent distractor and was fixed with one screw plus a tight rope. So one syndesmotic screw and tight rope and uh, with an anatomical plate. And it went on to doing great. So these are the final uh, pictures. So uh, this is what was done for a case of syndesmotic malunion. Shall I disturb you again here? Please, 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 uh, please. Uh, you uh, feel, feel free so, to uh, no, so stop that, uh, it. No, no, the point will be driven home. That's the only reason. Whether you like this uh, syndesmotic screw to cross the medial cortex of the tibia, that is uh, whether you want to use for eight cortices or four cortices or six cortices. Yeah. Uh, excellent, uh, excellent question. So whenever I am doing a routine case, I like to use a syndesmotic screw, which is 3.5 mm, which is three cortices. And whenever I am doing a revision case, I like to use either two screws, which are four cortices, 3.5 mm, or a screw and a tight rope. If I'm using a tight rope and a screw, uh, then I think three cortices also works well. But by okay. and large, for a fresh case, I'm going to use a screw, which is going to go three cortices. Okay. Then uh, when do you mobilize? This is after removal of the screw or you are going to mobilize this patient weight bearing? Yeah. 
I mobilize this patient weight bearing by six to eight weeks, depending upon the union of the other fractures. I don't remove this screw. The only time I remove this screw is if at the end of four months of mobilization after union of the fracture, if my dorsiflexion is not coming, that means I have done some mistake and my syndesmotic screw is more tight than it should have been. So it is at that time that I remove the syndesmotic screw. Otherwise, on a routine basis, I don't remove the syndesmotic screw. Okay, you do the final tightening of the syndesmotic screw in keeping the ankle and foot in full dorsiflexion? Not at all. So that keeping ankle into dorsiflexion or plantar flexion while you are tightening the screw, that concept has already gone. You keep the ankle into the position of the comfort and you tighten your syndesmotic screw. Now, since we are discussing this, Yes. Let me elaborate my way of reducing the syndesmosis. One more question I'll ask uh, yes. before that. Since you are not removing the syndesmotic screw, how many cases, how many, what is the percentage of your cases where the syndesmotic screws have broken? Yes. So I'm going to answer both the questions. Okay. So the answering first, yes, syndesmotic screws do break, but you, I always inform patient that this screw is going to break, don't worry about it. And to everybody's surprise and horror, now this has also been supported by the literature, the moment your screw breaks, your range of movement increases and patient feels better. That means your screw was put in little tightly. So even if screw breaks, it doesn't matter. It in, in fact improves <coughs> the patient's condition. Now coming to the way I... Uh, reduce my syndesmotic injuries. Dr. Rajiv, this uh, is Dr. Samantha, just one. Please, Samantha. Yes, thing is that as because we know that during the acute injuries also this reduction of the syndesmotic is quite tricky and sometimes people may go around with the malreduce incisora and this uh, joint. So do you in this neglected case open at the front a small incision and see that it is it is perfectly seated in the incisora or just you see from the back side? Fantastic question. You see, even in, the, even in the routine case, I almost always go up to the level of joint. Yes, I always because, open. Because incisura is a very dicey thing. In, Paul Tornetto did a research study and he came up with an observation that 64% of the cases had incisura, which was not convex concave it was like it was not a flat it was convex concave the shape was different so look at the reduction at the level of the joint and look at that mercedes benz sign which you are going to see at the joint level so yes. in an acute case or even in a chronic case or in a neglected case open up to the incisura and see yourself at the uh, below the level of the incisura, go up to the level of the joint and see the reduction there. That is what is not going to be dicey. Now, coming to the uh, my way of managing the trimalleolar fractures with the syndesmotic injury, I always take the lateral X ray of the opposite limb and I always put it on a view box together with the CT scan pictures. And that is always guiding me. And the first sort of image intensifier which I take is the lateral view of opposite ankle in a neutral position. That also lies saved on the image intensifier. Then I paint and wrap both the lower lips. When I open, I always open syndesmosis. I always open syndesmosis. If I have taken a posterior lateral approach, then I put in a separate anterolateral incision to see the syndesmosis. If I put in an anterolateral fibular, uh, fibular plate approach, then obviously I'm going to go and dilate my approach proximally and distally, and then I am going to see the syndesmosis. I do the open reduction of the syndesmosis. Sometimes I take the sutures through the uh, frayed end of the entry inferior tibiofibular ligament so that the ligament do not get infolded when I'm reducing it. I'll clean the gutter up and I'll reduce it by and large. I'm going to use my finger and thumb for the reduction. 
it is only into the neglected case that i use a clamp and when i use a clamp the position of the clamp is again 30 degree posterior anterior and onto the crest of the fibula and crest of the tibia so that my clamp clamp would not over or under compress so i do the manual uh, reduction and then i put in a uh, one blocking anterior wire which is anterior to the fibula so when you are putting your screw which is going from posterior lateral to anteromedial your fibula is liable to slip forward so i put in one wire into the syndesmosis to maintain the reduction and another anterior blocking wire which will not displace my syndesmotic reduction so anterior blocking wire would be first and then comes my a uh, syndesmotic reduction wire and then i put in then i fix in my syndesmosis so this is how i do for the acute injuries uh, any any question with respect to that sir or my esteem panelists sir yeah yeah that's fine i think uh, that is a really great tip to put a blocking caver in front of the fibula just to prevent the translation of the fibula anteriorly very great yeah, so yes. so because so many studies have noted that the instability in an antero posterior plane is more severe than what we are testing with uh, our uh, cotton stays or modified cotton stays so that is what bothers us much and that's why the fibula uh, lateral x ray to see the fibula of the opposite side uh, now this was probably samanto has seen this case a male aged 48 years non diabetic he had a closed injury and how would this be managed and this is how the open reduction and internal fixation of fibula was done uh i am going to some better x ray so four weeks this was the x ray picture there was some induration at the level of the uh, fibular incision uh, uh dr jayant uh, you would wish to comment on this x ray i think yeah it is there yeah anyway so there was some some induration here at the end of four weeks and then it was because of the infection post operative infection it sets in surgeon went in did the debridement removed the implant and then put in a bone cement impregnated k wire like this and the medial clear space which was increased was not corrected the posterior malar fracture was also like that mal united and then it was at the four months this patient came to me walking with the pain limp swelling complaining of pinching by that pin and also complaining warmth at the level of this scar so yeah sir what this was the clinical picture front view view from the back and this is how he was walking he was walking with the limb pain no infection what next so do i go ahead with the case or someone wants to comment uh, gurunath yes yes gurunath sir good evening sir sir in this case i just want to say is the infection plays a important role and the condition of the soft tissue is very important so on that condition we have to uh, proceed further here i want to just clear the medial gutter place first mm -hmm. see the condition of the cartilage that is very important and then the uh, maintenance of the uh, fibula and rotation of the fibula excise whatever the dead bone is there maintain it and if there is a gap fill that gap with bone graft but maintenance with fixatory is very important okay so again the as you said clearance of the medial gutter then gutter looks cleared like this and then removal of this uh, a uh, piece of k wire together with the uh, cement 
and then i went in i cleared the syndesmotic gutter put in the clamp accepted some mal union of the posterior malleolus which was about 1 or 2 mm and then put in two screws uh syndesmotic screws and this is how it looked like and that is at the eight, end of eight weeks he has no pain is walking with complete full range of motion do we have x ray eight weeks yeah no i think i i not put in that x ray yeah okay. yeah but this was what we got That's, on yeah excellent yeah excellent yeah ankle mortis has been restored yeah. back restored back so yeah. one question please uh, what was the condition of the uh, fibular uh, at the fibular site was it united or uh, yeah. it it had, it had united it was a little uh, uh, flimsy union but except that anyway i was going to immobilize him after uh, removal of that pain so i did okay. not do anything to the fibula i just put in the two six screws i think i think uh, rajiv even even if to guruna thought so if you find that part of the fibula is still missing i think we we can't go with this infected scenario with some bone graft and exactly. go ahead Exactly. Yes, sir. Agreed. Agreed. You can keep the distal fifth of the fibula. Go look around the ankle and forget about the rest of the part of the fibula. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So fibular okay. malunion. What is important is the position of the syndesmotic screws, and that is demonstrated so beautifully here. The level of the screws and also the direction in the lateral view. If you see, going from posterior medial to uh, from posterior lateral to anterior medial. So I think this is how a perfect syndesmotic screw should be placed. That is the take-home message in the screws. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, fibular malunion. We have talked about it. It is very common. Issues of the length and rotation. Again, you need to do medial clearance, lateral clearance, fibular osteotomy, either a oblique osteotomy or a transverse osteotomy. So, what are the tricks to restore the length in a commutated situation? So this. kind of a thing you have to hold plate distally with screws and plus or minus k wires put in a bicortical screw proximal to the plate hold plate oppo opposed to the bone with the clamp and then distract like this and then put in a bicortical screw at the upper edge of the plate use a lamina spreader monitor length and rotation on image intensifier and do the final fixation like i have shown in the uh, uh, this sided final x ray and sometimes you might have to put a small anterior mini fragment plate in a very comminuted situation where you are putting a lateral plus an anterior plate like this so comminuted fibula this is the trick uh, to give a stable fixation and you can use a, a sort of two plane plate for such cases so look at this case again this is not my case this is anish kadakia's case so he has used an anterior mini fragment plate uh, over in above the fibular plate where the situation was very much comminuted like i saw so going to this case female of 45 had a only functional limb left lower limb who with a neglected fracture so this is how this patient presents to you at the end of uh, uh, Four months, where the uh, medial as well as lateral malleolar fracture is neglected, and that is the only working limb. The other limb is a polio limb. So I had to go in. I did the osteotomy of the medial malleolus of the lateral malleolus. Put in a plate, fix into the distal fragment, and then uh, use of the Hinterman uh, distract. Use you can see that the distal fragment is rotated internally. to fix with the proximal fragment and then this was a fixation on table this is how it went on to union uh comments on to this was a clinical picture where patient was walking without pain but any comments on to this fixation dr samanto revision fixation is problem is that more or less you have to salvage somehow i uh, because 
uh, otherwise you, this is the probably i would have done the same way or else nothing is left because otherwise you have to go directly with the your uh, fuse like your ttc sort of situation and if doctor, you can salvage at this yeah point, that is great but i but think doctor, but do you find that this is a good reduction dr gurunath this is not at all good and acceptable yeah so obviously if we have a closer look here this has a problem of the sentence line of the ankle this is not the one which anybody would have loved to get so this is definitely a suboptimal but then look at the function of this patient no pain excellent movement i'll run the video again she is walking on this limb without any pain with a good function that is so, the beauty that is the beauty of the ankle the reconstruction yes. so that is the beauty of the reconstruction that is what i wanted to stress this was one of my early case where i did not really restore complete fibular length i had some uh, degree of uh, uh, incongruity ankle incongruity but still this patient now this patient i have been following this patient up for more than 5 years and she is doing fantastically well she came very recently with some other patient not as a patient so and then her ankle was working excellent this is the video i took very very recently and though i don't have the picture at the end of 5 years but the moral or the message which i want to convey is try to reconstruct for patients whom you really require it and it really gives good result this was the 4 month old neglected injury with a increased medial clear space syndesmotic space fibula is also mal united now this is the kind of a case where you will be doing oblique uh, osteotomy through the fracture line you will not be going for a transverse osteotomy like other cases again both the limbs prepped lateral view of opposite ankle over my monitor for comparison position of the bump is very very important it is underneath the ankle ankle is not hanging incision is marked and then you open medially you open laterally clean out the gutter do the osteotomy through the original fracture site and then uh, try and yeah that's the medial sided clearance and then the fibular fracture was fixed again fixation with the plate and a syndesmotic screw medial and lateral closer and this is the picture and that's the union with the complete restoration of the length of the fibula and restoration of the ankle mortise that's the position of the syndesmotic screw and that is a function at the end of a year full movements no pain and she is back to her routine work medial malleolar mal union it leads to varus or valgus mal union you need to reset the prominent bone and realign it with the osteotomy use your k wire plus a fluoro always protect your tendon of tibialis posterior do bone grafting and fixation posterior malleolar mal union is yes uncommon but there could be posterior lateral subluxation and then when there is a posterior lateral subluxation you are using posterior lateral approach many a times i have added additional postero medial approach now this is because dr gurunath when we are doing an osteotomy for the mal united postero lateral part of the posterior malleolus you want to see where your osteotomy is exiting and for that you need a postero medial approach so because you are not able to see from the postero lateral approach so in a postero For mal union of the posterior malleolus, many times I have done with with the both approach, posterior medial as well as posterior lateral approach, and that gives you a great leverage. So you reduce the mal union, fix with the posterior plate, and look at this case. Now, this was a 65 years old gentleman, father of a general surgeon, who was treated uh, uh, for this injury in a plaster, and then. this was in the plaster x ray was taken after about week and this is how it got displaced patient had no comorbidities he was of 65 years so this was accepted and the treatment was continued 
and then when he came to me at the end of four and a half months this is how the uh, ct scan pictures look there was malunion of the posterior uh, malleola small union of the fibula lazy lateral position was given i did the osteotomy of the posterior malleolus i was prepared to take posterior medial approach if i had had some difficulty did the osteotomy of fibula through the original fracture this is the kind of lazy lateral approach position i give when i have to approach posterior malleolus lateral malleolus medial malleolus and this is how he was fixed uh, with the posterior Uh, played for posterior malleolus and revision fixation for lateral malleolus, and he went on to unite. Another important case: this was a 73 years male who was non-diabetic, had a road traffic accident in Mumbai, and he was treated with this kind of fixation. Uh, do you all feel that this fixation is absolutely perfect? No, no, the yeah, medial malleolus is not very well reduced. There is a, we can see that it is a translated, and also there is a medial translation, probably anteroposterior also it is translated because we can see the spike anteriorly in the lateral view. Yeah, you are able to see see the spike anteriorly. Yes. So this is how he was fixed, and then after full weight bearing at seven months. surgeon went on taking the x rays patient went on uh, for the follow up from gujarat to mumbai he was allowed full weight bearing uh, after the union of the fracture and this is what happened at 7 months after full weight bearing and this Sir, do you think that that is due to ligamentous deltoid ligament injury or uh, not fixing it properly because so much of opening medially yeah How definitely, can... definitely, it was not fixed properly, and most importantly, as I said earlier, mm. once I do complete fixation of the ankle, I always stress medially, and this is what is the today's message that today every ankle surgeon world over would always look for the subtle. or occult or obvious kind of deltoid injuries by stressing the fixation at the end of everything you stress it you do the inversion stress uh, inversion stress test and look at lateral stress test and look at the opening of the ankle and if there is some disintegrity of the medial malleolus you need to protect it or i mean lateral ligament you need to go in and do the repair i have now a low threshold to repair the deltoid so this is how the ct scan pictures looked like and this is how the ankle was displaced so what next he is a 72 years old patient without infection without comorbidity he is the elder brother of a leading general surgeon of some place in gujarat so four international and two indian opinions for the same case were taken international opinions all of them majority of them they said fusion and few people said revision and then i went in and i revised it this is this were the moments so i mean would you be really thinking to to sacrifice such a mobile joint so i decided to salvage the ankle implants were removed cartilage was good you can see the cartilage from here i did the clearance of the medial gutter i did the medial sided fixation the fragment was very small with one k wire and one screw i fixed it did the syndesmotic clearance put in a lateral plate and the syndesmotic fixation this time with the four cortices 3.5 mm screw and even after fixation of the medial malleolus look at the way deltoid i'll run this video again look at the way you have a medial laxity yes. so this definitely required repair of the deltoid and i also augmented it with the internal brace putting 
one anchor into the uh, uh, median malleolus, one into the talus, one into the sustained traculum talli. And this is how the final fixation looked like. That's the anchor. And this is the syndesmotic screw and the ankle joint restored. And that's the post-operative uh, picture. Uh, I feel there is some slight space or some fragment here, but this is what I could uh, get on table without doing revision. <clears throat> so uh, this gentleman went back to the normal activity. He uh, uh, was doing all the activity. I was uh, very keen to get his clinical pictures as well as the x-ray. And unfortunately, when I called his uh, uh, younger brother, general surgeon, he said they lost him in COVID infection before three weeks. That's a sad story. So this was all about when you have a deformity in a malunited or ununited or a neglected ankle fracture at the level of the fracture per se, which is the majority of the time you find that kind of deformity. But when you have a deformity, which is at the level of the joint, you need to correct it at the level of joint or above the joint. If you want to have a deformity, which is at the level of joint, you use a intra-articular osteotomy described by Mark Myers and that is plafond plasty or osteotomy, which is called distal tibial oblique osteotomy, described by Professor Sukasa of Japan, and distal tibial intra-articular osteotomy for a valgus case, again described by the same professor. So look at this case. Distal tibial oblique osteotomy for malunion with a focal arthritis. You can see the focal arthritis at, with the varus here. So this is how a K wire goes at the level of tibio fibular. Shall I disturb you here? Please. Uh, here, the ankle, distal tibial articular surface uh, appears to be uh, in the level. Only the talus has gone into varus. That's what I can see in this x ray. Yes, yes, yes. So, so how it is the focal? No, no, because uh, we are tackling by uh, doing the osteotomy of the tibia when the problem is probably the lateral ligaments are lax here in this case. No, but then this requires both. Yes. So supramalleolar osteotomy, whenever you are doing, you have to address the lateral ligament also. So the yes. first thing when I do distal tibial oblique osteotomy is anterolateral gutter clearance. That is the first thing. Yes. And with that, I do ankle arthroscopy to just look at the type of the cartilage and wash out the ankle. Okay. Then you do this osteotomy. The beauty of this osteotomy is that you need not do fibular osteotomy. And once you do this osteotomy, you also reconstruct the ligaments. Lateral ligaments, sometimes you need to release the medial ligaments in a, for a case of varus. For a case of valgus, you have to do plication of the deltoid and sometimes release on the lateral side. Okay. Sir, I'll request you to start your video because... Uh, People will be seeing the speaker. No, but I, I it, it just stops on its own. I, no, okay. I yeah. start, but then it automatically goes. Okay. okay. Yeah. So once you uh, pass in a K-wire, over this K-wire, you pass your Udu type osteotomes. And this osteotomes, they go up to this level. And then you slowly, with the lamina spreader, open this. And you open this, fix it with temporary K wires and put in the bone graft here and fix a plate and then test your ligaments and give the stability to the ligaments. And this is how it was fixed. Flat ligament reconstruction, as I said, was done and transcalcaneal pin was passed because this patient also had uh, to undergo a chopart kind of an amputation. So I had to give little more stability for three to four weeks I kept in this plate. The distal tibial oblique osteotomy is an intra-articular osteotomy described by Professor Sukara, where for virus cases, you do this osteotomy. I'm showing you another excellent case. Now, this was a case done together with Dr. Patil. Now, this was the Man United ankle case. And look at this. Look at the kind of 
incongruity into the joint and this is the way this guy was walking pain he was a young patient he had a pain and everybody advised that you need to go in and do the arthrodesis now if you take a long leg standing film and if you mark the angles uh, proximal tibial angles and the distal lateral and uh, uh, and uh, lateral tibial angles then this angle so that he is into varus so could you salvage this ankle yes you could so distal tibial oblique osteotomy the first thing as i said is the clearance of entero lateral gutter so that's what was done the gutter was clear because then only talus has a place to shift and then this was opened up and this was fixed up with elizero you can also opt to plate, uh, fix it with a plate and then this is how it went on to union that is at the 9 months that he is doing all work of routine life okay then look at the way he walks this is at the end of 9 months this is at the end of 9 months that he is able to do all the activities and he has gone back to the uh, routine activities so uh, whatever you feel you have to think about salvaging the ankle and you could salvage ankle with this distal tibial oblique osteotomy now you have a deformity of third type where you have a deformity which is above the joint then you have to correct above the joint so either you could do supramedullary osteotomy you can also use distal tibial oblique osteotomies you could use calcaneal osteotomies or combinations so extra articular deformity you need supramedullary osteotomy it could be lateral closed wedge lateral open wedge it could be medial closed wedge medial open wedge the most preferred ones are the medial open wedge and sound fixation is very very important now look at the case for that a male of 34 years one year post neglected ankle fracture now this is the kind of picture on the ct and into the x ray standing x ray uh, dr gurunath what would be management in your books would you salvage this ankle or would you sacrifice this ankle no oh, i think Is we not... have to uh, unmute Gurunath. Okay. Yeah, he is speaking. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, I just want to salvage this joint. I just want to confirm the condition of the articular surface that is one by CT scan. Second is is, is the there any scan. infection that no I want infection. to? No infection. No infection. Then salvage is uh, mandatory in this case, sir, considering the age. Yes. Okay. So, how would you salvage? First is uh, there is fibula. Fibular overlapping is there. Mm hmm. Articular surface is reduced. Can you have some other uh, uh, picture, sir? Oh. X-rays or CT scans. yeah these are the uh, important ct scans which i thought i should i would put in but okay i also went in uh, with the thought process you had i wanted to salvage the ankle but this is what the closer picture of the uh, ct scan and then i went in and i did the osteotomy at the supra medullar level little more closer to the joint do look at this cartilage but central as, defect yeah as dr samanto said the ankle cases they do well this is at the end of one and a half years though he has restriction of dorsiflexion but he is walking comfortably without any issue so think of an osteotomy and revision for a neglected ankle fracture now going to the arthrodesis when the patient is young there is a big deformity plus there is a bone loss or there is infection 
और न्यूरोपैथी और एसोसिएटेड नॉन यूनियन और माल यूनियन ऑफ अनदर फ्रैक्चर हायर अप और लोअर लेवल दीज आर दाइम टाइप्स ऑफ केसेस वेर यू रिक्वायर फ्यूजन ऑफ द एंकल and there when you have when you go in and you see a global loss of cartilage global arthritis that again is a case for the ankle fusion now people say that the gait after ankle fusion is never going to be the normal and patient is going to have problem i am showing you the gait of the patient after 5 years of ankle fusion and i'm also going to show his share his story but gurunath can you tell me which side we have done ankle fusion this is 5 years post ankle fusion in a young patient and i'm going to share his story probably left side sir because uh, it seems there is slight restriction of dorsiflexion but it is very difficult to uh, okay. comment I'll make that it more easy now is that left side or right side which side we have done ankle fusion yeah right side okay you could see this scar yes yeah, we could see the scar <laughs> <laughs> so now let me share this story of this patient who underwent multiple surgeries now he was a 29 years old male had a compound grade 3 this kind of fracture dislocation i don't have the initial uh, uh, clinical picture uh, of this patient uh and then he was treated with an external fixator and debridement then the second surgery was plastic reconstruction on a medial side they took in a they got a local flap rotated then once the surgeon felt that the infection is under control surgeon went in and did this kind of fixation fixation of medial malleolus with two kys and fibular fixation now this is how this was the third fourth surgery this patient underwent and this was the clinical picture uh, a graft on one side of flap on the medial side and a fibular plate and a two k wires on a medial side and unfortunately this got infected and so then after this got infected surgeon did a debridement removed the k wire removed the k wire and uh that debridement also failed so it was after the fifth surgery that he landed up with me with a draining sinus and uh, this is how he got infected so again the surgery debridement removal of everything and cement granules antibiotic impregnated cement granules were kept by me i put in an external fixator and also uh, plastic surgeon was asked to do the coverage and this is how he did the coverage with the external fixator on uh, cement granules inside with expix and plastic coverage this was the surgery at my side this is how i did the surgery and 6 weeks after this index surgery infection was under control and this was the x-ray picture some cement granules were still unabsorbed but then there was no infection his procalcitonin crp everything was set, was settling down and then i thought that now it's a time for me to go in so i took the lateral approach went in cleaned up everything and put in a lateral plate because i never wanted to give him a ttc fusion so i put in a two compression screws and a lateral uh, ankle fusion plate uh, yeah this is the plate uh, uh, designed uh, indigenously and this patient was the same whose picture you saw walking and we could not really differentiate that which particular side we have done the ankle fusion so the moral the message i want to give is that the skin condition would dictate your implant positioning and this is how in this patient we put in the lateral plate with bone grafts or somewhere here we have put in a anterior plate and we have put in a posterior plate for the ankle fusion and young patients they do very well after ankle fusion they 
do gain some midfoot joint movements which makes them very very much uh, apt for uh, doing all the activities of daily living yes sir can you go back that one slide please uh, my question is do you fuse the ankle in about 5 to 10 degrees of equinus or what is the angle you keep the uh, talo uh, tibial angle so that's a great question whenever you fuse the ankle number one you push the talus back over the tibia to increase the lever arm of your tendo achilles that's one second you fuse fuse ankle into 0 to 5 degree of valgus and neutral dorsiflexion or plantar flexion in fact when i'm putting my screws i try to dorsiflex my ankle as much as possible so even 4 to 5 degree of dorsiflexion Clinically, it would look whenever I'm putting my screws so that when I leave that foot, my uh, ankle comes into neutral degree, zero degree. So it is zero degree of dorsi to plantar flexion. Having said so, many a times, if patient has got stiffness into midfoot or subtalar joint, I have given a rocker in a footwear which makes the life of patient easy to uh, go ahead with walking. So that is what we do. We put in the rocker into the footwear to make patients gait comfortable. But otherwise, you don't fuse your ankle into plantar flexion. That's a very bad position and you would need to revise it. I've done it once. I fused one of patient's ankle into five to seven degree of equinus and then I had to go in with a supra uh, malleolar osteotomy and correct it. This is another situation of a young laborer who had a posterior malleolus fracture, somebody fixed like that. Uh, uh, medial malleolus was, uh, I mean, medial sided opening was there. There was a malunion at the level of fixes, uh, fibula, which was fixed with the pin. And then ultimately he went in for the transfibular ankle arthrodesis. Another case, this patient had multiple surgeries for a compound fracture of the ankle, which was a pylon variety of the ankle. This was then treated uh, with multiple surgeries, went into the infection, non-union, and then he was referred to me from Delhi. Infected non-union with arthritis. I don't think that you have an option to salvage such cases. You have to go in for the uh, fusion and when you are doing such a fusion you have to extend your fusion mass up up to the non-union to include your uh, non-union this is what was done in this patient and he went on to unite so these are the varieties of ankle fusions for ankle malunion you need you put in an ankle anterior plate you can put in a posterior plate you can put in a lateral plate you can put in a, a, a nail to do the ankle fusion with the nail like I've done in this case. And Dr. Siv Sankar would be very happy because he is the father of nailing in this country. Whenever you use nail, he's very happy. And the last case, a diabetic female aged 50 years sustained fall in bathroom three days back and she had injured her left ankle. So this is how this patient comes to an orthopedic surgeon. And what is most important for us to understand that patient reaches to the doctor three days after the injury. So for all diabetic ankle fractures, the first question I ask to the patient, could you stand after the injury? Could you walk after the injury? And the duration of the injury and presentation time to us is very, very important. So this patient was not evaluated for anything and surgeon went in and fixed medial malleolus with a screw and a wire. Now, if you look at this fracture, which is of a vertical medial malleolar variety, it should have been ideally fixed Dr. Samanto with the plate, but then it was fixed with the screw and a K wire. Yes, yes. This is not the recommended way of fixation of this fracture anyway. Yeah. So then this patient was kept in a slab and then Dr. Jayant, he was mobilized, he was mobilized non-weight bearing at the end of four weeks and this is how the fixation started giving way. 
your comments on to this dr jayant sir i think uh, the basic principle was not followed here and i think the bigger problem was that uh, the bigger problem was that uh, the evaluation pre op understanding of the fracture geometry was not there gurunath would you like to add something the condition uh, the diabetic condition has to be uh, seen first absolutely absolutely so this patient was not evaluated for diabetic neuropathy the way this patient came walking after third day of injury yes. this kind yes. of thing so patient had pre existing neuropathy which was missed by the uh, surgeon and uh surgeon then realized this and surgeon went on to doing a revision fixation and this is how he revised the fixation uh, uh samanto uh, your comments on to this fixation yes it is not much a better fixation than the previous one okay but still there is some uh, i think medial malleolus they could not reduce is properly okay on the lateral, lateral view also there is some uh, opening on the front i think so this patient was yeah please coronar there is only one screw uh, that is uh, the medial malleolus is fixed with one screw the plate uh, has got no screw in the medial malleolus fragment exactly exactly he could have used a hook kind of a plate he could have used a hook kind of plate which could have given a better stability into the medial malleolus anyway he was patient was given a plaster for four weeks after this and then plaster was removed non weight bearing mobilization was started there was breakdown of the wound on the medial side and this was the x ray uh, at the end of four weeks of second fixation uh jayan sir comments on to this x ray now it is reaching a difficult stage further difficulty there is destruction of the joint now and now there is skin breakage also and infection also so probably you need to clean it up first remove the implant get a coverage and uh, once it settled down then looks doomed i think you might end up with a fusion here yeah so this is what was the x ray picture surgeon went on doing dressing and keeping the patient into a splintage and on one fine day this is what happened patient non weight bearing and this is how uh, the fracture at the lower third of the tibia here here uh what next uh, uh, uh sir shiv shankar sir this is uh, again you have to get the wound as jain said you have to get the wound right then probably i will use a, a, a retrograde nailing at, uh, and to fuse the ankle joint that will take care of the fracture of the tibia also because already the medial malleolus is gone so i have only option of fusing this uh, tibio talar joint yes perfectly ap because the problems are malunion non union infection and this this is the yes. sarcoid this all yes. tissues this fluffy tissues are sarco tissues and a lower the tibia fracture so now i also thought that i am going to do the tibio talo calcaneal fusion with the retrograde nail in this patient but the problem with every nail every ttc nail is that the distance between the screw which comes above the ankle the first screw which comes above the ankle and the first screw which goes below the ankle this distance is fixed in every nail because i designed the nail with the available indian nail i knew that that the distance between this two is fixed in every nail so i was sure that if i use the nail my oblong hole of the nail is going to come at the level of the fracture site sir i will normally use a 
supracondylar nail that is retrograde femur uh, the they have three lateromedial locking one of them will come in the talus then other two will be in the distal tibia so below that fracture you can do it uh well i did not thought of using that nail because uh, uh, i have my reservations about the uh, strength stability and the multiple locking options uh, yes. through that nail and the nail which i use the nail which i have designed has capability to compress ankle joint as well as subtalar joint through the nail through the nail with a nut you can compress ankle joint you can compress the subtalar joint and that is the beauty of the nail with which i was so a nail has capability to generate compression which you very well need for your fusion cases so what i did in this case yes stage 1 as dr jain said debridement implant removal problem of the coverage was not there and then i did ankle fusion with the hind foot nail and stabilization of the fracture with the elizauro apparatus <laughs> look at this yes at exactly this. exactly so then compression at the ankle fusion compression at the fracture site by the elizauro apparatus followed by locking of the nail followed by removal of the elizauro apparatus that was what planned in this patient and we were almost there with plan of removal of the elizaro apparatus and we lost that patient with some other comorbid problem in the last part of neglected ankle fracture is ankle replacement if you have severe deformity or bone loss ankle replacement is out of question if there is infection or neuropathy ankle replacement is out of question poor skin poor vascularity ligament imbalance severe ligament laxity imbalance ankle replacement is out a vascular necrosis of the talus replacement implant cannot sit over it and neurological dysfunction dysfunctions again ankle replacement is out so there are very very limited indications for ankle replacement though the ankle replacement implant is not available in india for marketing we did six or seven ankle replacement cases all the cases were done as the demonstration surgery in a, a conference so i am going to show you india's first star total ankle replacement case which is the longest survive ankle replacement case this was the patient who had a missed fracture over here together with a fracture in the tibia and a fibula plating was done this was a doctor from nagpur and then i first corrected his malunion to the best of the ability restored the length of the fibula removed the tibia nail and tried to broad bring ankle mortis to as normal as possible and then he was implanted with a star a total ankle replacement it's now 8 years since this implant has survived he even went to us and now he is there in the us working in one of the hospital so that is the last option where you can think of the replacement if it is available so that finishes my presentation on to neglected ankle fractures before Sir, i move on before to that fractures. yeah before that we'll take few questions so that people there are many people who have asked questions so they will be interested to get the answers please yes. gurunath you wanted something hello okay dr harjot singh Hmm. as sent this case he is not having the pre operative picture but this is how the uh, ankle was fixed hmm. and this is uh, after some time when the patient has come to him now his question is mal united fracture then the initial surgery done elsewhere only option is it orthodesis sir please discuss in detail about orthodesis of ankle when to do triple orthodesis later nail arch screws etc this yeah. is it yeah so 
not that this case the only option is arthrodesis one can try to reconstruct depending upon this uh, skin condition the age and activity of the patient whether the patient is comorbid or not so let's not go into that we have discussed enough about the reconstruction but suppose we want to do the arthrodesis the most preferred way of arthrodesis is by a lateral transfibular approach you need to remove the implant of the on the fibular side do the fibular osteotomy 2.5 cm above the level of above the tip of the fibula this osteotomy traverses from proximal lateral to distal medial so that when you pass the screw the trajectory of screw is not obstructed by the osteotomized fibula so you do the osteotomy of fibula flip that fibula posteriorly so your access to the ankle joint is very very clear and then clean up the ankle cartilage do multiple drilling of the ankle as well as uh, i mean uh, tibia as well as talar cartilage do some osteotom singling of the articular surface to increase the blood supply of the articular surface reduce or ankle with your good release you reduce the ankle into the neutral to 5 degree valgus position neutral dorsiflexion to plantarflexion and some external rotation 0 to 5 degree and then fix it temporarily with the k wires and then replace this k wires with screws the screw which you put first for the ankle fusion is called home run screw this screw goes from posterior lateral aspect of the tibia to the antero medial aspect of the talus so it goes right up to the talus snake it's a long screw i use 6.5 mm cannulated cancellous screws and when you fix this screw when you tighten this screw whole talus comes back over the tibia and it generates a good compression so you can use three screws and then the osteotomized fibula is sectioned to the half the half portion is used medial half is used for the bone graft the lateral half is attached back to the tibia to be used as a live plate and a screw from fibula one screw from fibula to tibia one screw from fibula to talus goes and this acts as a live plate so yes. when you are doing arthrodesis with the screws this is what you do yes arthrodesis with the plate is mainly done when you have your subtalar joint not involved and when your patient is really able to afford the plate because that plate is costing 1 lakh 10000 we don't i don't know of an indian anterior plate but the imported anterior plate price at 1.2 lakhs for the patient so for an anterior approach you go between the extensor hallucis longus on the end tibialis anterior you go from the sheath of the extensor hallucis longus tibialis anterior goes medially extensor hallucis longus extensor digitorum longus and neurovascular they go laterally and then you go clean out the medial lateral and the central gutter of the ankle prepare your joint and put in the screws or a plate and the third approach is the posterior approach to the ankle fusion posteriorly the tibia and talus they are very close so posterior arthrodesis gives you a good leverage only thing posterior for posterior arthrodesis you are taking a approach which is a posterior lateral approach and it could even be the trans tendo achilles approach and then once you go to the flat posterior surface of the tibia you need to slice the portion of the tibia to align your plate right in line with the uh, uh, with the talus so posteriorly you need to do osteotomy of some posterior portion of the tibia in the normal it is fixed with a, a plate you can also opt to fix it with the screws so plate or screws is your choice triple arthrodesis is never done in i have never done i have never thought of doing triple arthrodesis for a case which has got a pure ankle malunion no for pure ankle malunion you will do ankle fusion sometimes if the patient is neuropathy then you are going one joint below that is a subtalar joint so you are doing tbo talo calcaneal fusion but you never do talo navicular or calcaneal cuboid fusion for a triple fusion okay i think dr hajot singh from mahasamund in chatisgarh should be happy uh, yes and another case 
this is a case which has been conservatively treated only malishing has been done it's a trimalar fracture this is an untreated neglected 8 month old trimalar fracture only massage has been done for 8 months adult male of 40 years is reconstruction is option to be considered or only arthrodesis now at 8 months absolutely reconstruction should be considered i have, i have highlighted it my present in my presentation that reconstruction should be tried he is a 40 years male patient and he has lot many years left Okay. Yes, uh, Dr. Dhanidhi Desai uh, from your own town has a question. Is it? It is shown that in spite of articular damage, if axis is corrected, refixation gives reasonably good result. What is the threshold for going for fusion? Okay. So as I said that I have a very low threshold to go in and do reconstruction. when you restore the length and axis even if there is some articular incongruity patient has so many years to work and that is why reconstruction is always preferred than the fusion uh well arthrodesis sometimes when you select reconstruction and when you see that the articular surface is very badly damaged uh which should not be the case because you gone with the pre operative ct scan you gone with the pre operative x rays and you done your pre operative evaluation it is at that time that you will go for the uh, fusion or while during your while like case like this while you are trying to correct and you have inadvertently damaged your articular surface with your osteotome or curate that would be the time you might think of doing the fusion but otherwise try and do the reconstruction if the patient is young if patient uh, has a focal arthritis if patient has less duration always give a chance to reconstruction fusion can always be done it can always be done yes sir uh, in this uh, earlier case of dr harjot singh so if reconstruction these are the issues he wants to discuss what will be the issue is it the callus or the fibrosis limb shortening can fibula length be restored back can joint be maintained post uh, approach for fibula and poke months then uh, medial malleus will be reconstructed due to shrinkage ligament is it, will it be reducible okay so all those questions which are not answered in my presentation i will try and yes. answer this question yeah uh, so uh, yes issues what issue which i find here on the medial side is a very small medial malleolar fragment so i am likely to go ahead with a suture anchor and reconstruction of the deltoid in this case so that's one issue the second issue is because it's like 8 months i guess it's like 8 months so yeah, yeah. so maybe uh, if you are uh, beginner or if you see such kind of combination in sub kind such kind of long extending fracture line you might think of not going ahead with uh, uh, oblique osteotomy through the fracture you might somebody might like to go in and do the osteotomy above the level of mal union so that can be thought of but i would like to go ahead with an osteotomy through the fracture line in this case the another important thing is the reduction of the dislocated ankle that is probably is going to give you lot of problem and you will need to struggle you will need to distract this and then push it anteriorly uh i do you use a fixator no no can you on table how to distract it yeah. Yeah. just distract. with a plate distract. with a distract. screw femoral distractor femoral okay. distractor femoral okay. distractor okay uh, uh fibula length would be we will be able to restore the fibular posterior approach yes posterior lateral approach you will be taking in a posterior lateral approach if you are not able to see the trajectory of your osteotome where it is going you might have to add posterior medial approach uh medial malleolus will be contracted due to shrink ligament or reducible as i said there would be a problem of bringing this fragment back into the position you will have to take the ligaments right down up to the bone with a anchor into the medial malleolus and if patient is affording i'll also add 
uh, internal brace with one arm into the sustentaculum talli, one arm into the talus, and one arm into the medial malleolus. So what about posterior malleolus? Would you like to fix with plate or screw in this case? Because it seems to be comminuted here. Yeah, it is comminuted, so I'm going to put in a buttress plate. Unless you buttress that fragment, this ankle is not going to come back into the position. Okay. I think uh, if arthrodis is, I think the arthrodis is not a, a uh, plan for you. Should we discuss this arthrodis for the sake of Dr. Harjot Singh because he might be yeah, considering uh, that. So uh, suppose you're doing arthrodis, I think you're going to go with the osteotomy of the malunited fibula and then uh, uh, you would use uh, uh, screws uh, that is what would be the first preference. If not, then you can use a lateral plate if it is available. Uh, for arthrodesis, you're going to uh, put in a patient into the posterior splintage. This posterior splintage would be there for about six weeks. And then you evaluate how the union is progressing. And according to that, uh, you start uh, guarded mobilization. Weight bearing is never allowed uh, before 10 to 12 weeks unless we make sure that there is a good uh, union. Approach is, as I said, anterior, posterior, lateral. Okay, okay sir. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, this is Dr. Vache. Uh, Dr. Vache, can you take over this? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is a very interesting case. Patient presented to me directly after two months of his injury. Initially, he has got an ankle injury shown to a surgeon, then he uh, given the slab and patient went, he missed the follow-up and he was walking almost for two months with this, the slab. And when he presented to me, so this was the X-ray. You can see this X-ray. There is a medial uh, space is increased. The fibula is malunited. Then uh, my plan was uh, to take first is uh, condition of the skin. It was good. There was no much of swelling was there. The deformity was there. Then we took the CT scan. Uh, sorry for the CT scan is not available. There. Surprisingly, there was a posterior malleolus fracture that was unnoticed. Then we decided for the plan to take a uh, patient on lateral positions, floppy lateral position, posterior lateral incision. Then the problem was fibula was united. To, to mark the fibular osteotomy and then uh, reduction of the fibula, maintain the fibula with uh, temporary KYS and then uh, look for the posterior malleolus. So, yes, I'll uh, go back. Now I'll ask Rajiv, sir, uh, Dr. Shah. Yeah. Yes, this is the X-ray and you have heard the history. Uh, there is it doesn't there doesn't seem seems to be a posterior malleolus fracture on the X-ray at least. Yeah, so to see the posterior malleolus fracture, my my if I if I share my ankle protocol, I always get a lateral view in forty five degree external rotation, and this is the view which helps me intraoperatively also to monitor reduction of posterior malleolus. Normally, you always do the temporary fixation of fibula, temporary fixation of posterior malleolus, final fixation of posterior malleolus, and final fixation of fibula in chronology. But this is not true when you have severely comminuted fibula. In those kind of cases, you first do medial malleolus, then you do fibula, then you do posterior malleolus. So it is at this juncture, you need to monitor your reduction with the lateral view in 45 degree external rotation to see the posterior malleolus. When you take such an X-ray, the overlap of both the malleoli goes away and you clear cut, you have a clear cut delineation of posterior malleolus. So as Dr. Siv Sankar said, you need to take a lateral view in 45 degree external rotation to see the posterior malleolus. Yes. Okay. Gurunath, proceed. So, uh, this was the intraoperative CM images you can see. Uh, the, after the opening from the lateral, uh, posterior lateral side. So, this is the uh, osteotomy mark. You could see the fibular osteotomy was done. And uh, I could reduce the fibula 
level of the fibula at the same normal position and i fixed the fibula with k wire and uh, i found that the medial gutter was reduced well reduced then the previous yes then you can see uh, in clinical picture the posterior malleolus was uh, osteotomized and it was well separated and reduced in position and then fibular plate applied with the k wire in c2 and the plate for the posterior malleolus was done next slide please sir so these are the interop images you could see the reduction of the medial uh, clear face is well maintained fibular fixation k wire in c2 next sir then i found that the uh, syndesmotic ligament uh, the hook test is positive then i passed two screws to uh, fix this syndesmotic ligament next please so these are the some intraoperative photographs you can see the uh, size of the posterior malleolus if you see the pre uh, uh, surgery x ray there is no uh, mal uh, posterior malleolus you could see but intraoperatively i could uh, isolate so much of big fragment of posterior malleolus next sir so this is the post op image you can see the posterior malleolus is fixed with the uh, lower end uh, volar radius plate and fibula is fixed with uh, posterior lateral plating and syndesmotic screw so this is the post op x rays this is the ct scan you can see the posterior malleolus is uh, well reduced and uh, these are the ct images and this the next one is the final uh, photo uh, this final x ray after 2 years follow up so comments yes. please sir anything could have do, could have been done better because in this case sir i have not opened medially uh, to reduce uh, to reduce the uh, medial gutter uh, to uh, excise the medial fibrosis uh, but luckily i could uh, reduce the after reduction of the fibula the the clear place was reduced yeah so uh, so that it is what i was going to say the first thing i'll do always would be to clear the medial gutter first so that is the first thing second thing that fixation of the posterior malleolus has to be done first because then once you put the plate on the fibula then it is very difficult for you to really see the posterior malleolus reduction so it, it should have been done first otherwise you did fantastic job and uh, uh, maybe i am not sure you would be a better judge whether this screw the lower most screw is through the syndesmosis or it is above the syndesmosis this screw okay. i think rajiv in neglected cases the unless you clear the medial space it's always very difficult to reduce the talus if it is more than 6 weeks it is very very yes. difficult to reduce but yes. if you on the lateral side posterior side still this talus will not be in central position not absolutely a... right absolutely right but he could get it uh, otherwise you need a medial syndesmotic as well as lateral gutter clearance that is very important otherwise And... there is total stress at the lateral corner of the talus even if you reduce it forcefully with the fibula that is the problem yeah and so here problem. here you could you could reduce that gap but then uh, your screws and everything is uh, over the uh, with the lot of loads lot of loads yes, lot of you see yeah sometimes you find lot of things in this gutter you know people have found tendon of posterior tibialis posterior in this gutter lying so you should always be uh, you know watchful for this medial gutter um well as uh, uh, dr samant to said that medial lateral and uh, this gutter clearance is very important and you did the right thing to use two screws because in a neglected case you require uh, a little uh, stiffer fixation for of syndesmosis that is what i have observed okay thank uh, you yeah, yeah we have a question from dr dayanidhi again the syndesmotic fixation is required after fixing posterior malleolus uh, properly 
yeah that is a fantastic question you know dr dayanidhi sir is mentor of so many of us he has been past president of gujarat orthopedic association so sir uh, uh, 70% of the cases when you fix the posterior malleolus your syndesmotic stability is restored but that doesn't mean that every case it will happen so once you fix it you have to assess your syndesmosis and if you find that syndesmosis is unstable you have to uh, fix it in this case probably syndesmosis was unstable probably if syndesmosis was not, un not unstable this cruise probably helped tell us uh, to be <laughs> pushed and reduce the medial clear space this is in retrospect you can think yes uh, dr narayan swami from bengaluru he wants to know in diastasis of syndesmosis you just stabilize with the screws or do you look for ligaments to repair them uh, there are reports i know of some worker in uh, uh, south korea who has tried to repair the syndesmotic ligaments but you see these are in so bad shape that you can really hardly repair what people have done is people have put in a tight rope uh, also into uh, this space you know uh, sometimes there if there is a fragment together with the ligament then you can put in a screw into that but repairing the ligaments after few months or even in a fresh case is very very difficult we always try that ligament to heal with the fibrosis then with the end to end repair yes uh, we have a online question i don't know the uh, sender because it has been forwarded to me uh, this mal united or delayed presentation when operated do they ever become completely pain free or they are expected to have some kind of pain as the joint is already damaged yeah. sir this so, question is asked by me my personal question okay, neeraj okay. yeah so uh, neeraj bhai is my uh, computer internet e mentor you know <laughs> <laughs> so when i get stuck i always ask him that neeraj bhai this is what is the problem and he will immediately give the solution okay i am very happy to answer the, his question uh, yes this patients when we really operate and when we come out uh, i mean it's a very difficult proposition to operate such cases and we on the x ray we feel i also try to get ct scan of the patients post operatively whosoever agrees you sometimes feel that no your job is little incomplete but surprisingly they are quite pain free with good range of movement and they do very good uh, because you restored the axis to restore the length and rotation of the fibula so they do really very well yes they never return to your their pre injury status but then they definitely do better than uh, uh, the cases where you are doing arthrodesis yes so you don't have a kind of a study where on one side you have done fusion and one side you have done reconstruction and you got the patient's view that which one you like uh, <laughs> Uh, unlike my study in fracture calcaneus where i have done fusion in one on one side prospectively and fixation on other side i could compare otherwise this patient believe me they they are quite good after it is basically the arthritic ankles can tolerate pain and it can sustain longer than any of the joints in the body the most important thing is and which we all should remember that the radiologically evident arthritis or the irregularities do not match with the clinical picture yes yes that's yes. why cl ankle yeah, ankle clinically ankle. patients are doing fantastic but radiologically you see oh there is some imbalance some loss of cartilage something like that yes yes so now a covid question this is a lockdown period patient uh, trimalar fracture treated with the screws uh, sent by dr abhay shrivatsav from uh, jabalpur Diva sir, even yes. the COVID doesn't allow you to do this fixation. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. So yes. if it was a COVID, and then no, no, it's not the COVID. It is a COVID lockdown yeah, problem. Yeah, lockdown. Yeah. COVID. And then some fixation is attempted. Why not? Uh, you know, try to do some complete job. Yeah. They should have at least been distracted 
and you you don't have the reduction of the ankle mortis and this is going to land up into the uh, ankle fusion so it is always uh, better that and even this one limb one bad limb this limb has to be good so uh, one has to go in and uh, do something i don't see good cartilage here something has started going wrong here i do not know it is also tinting into varus how many months this is the two months. two months now now eight months this is two 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 months two yes. months right yeah the opposite limb is a polio with the deformity and uh, this limb has become stiff these are the findings hmm. middle age yeah. primary school teacher operated ankle stiff and painful unable to bear weight how to proceed what are the options of treatment yeah so if you see here the deformity is almost at the joint because it's a fracture which is is intra articular extension and deformities at the joint cora is also at the joint so if you are uh, uh, if you really want to correct this this requires an osteotomy which is an intra articular osteotomy mark myerson does plafond plasty which is an which is an intra articular osteotomy i like to do an osteotomy which is almost uh, at the level of the joint uh, which is dto or distal tibial oblique osteotomy which would run somewhere from here to here and then you will open it open it up and make your ankle mortis straight obviously you will have to do the anterolateral gutter clearance and still if your varus because of the soft tissue contracture persist you might be obliged to add a calcaneal osteotomy so you might be obliged to add dwyer's calcaneal osteotomy sometimes if the medial sided contracture is too much then you might have to lengthen or do the release on the medial side but i feel that once you really bring the ankle mortis into the normal uh, this thing it would it would be helpful uh, the one important thing which cannot be corrected by distal tibial oblique osteotomy is this uh, uh, posterior malleolus which is uh, lying like that and the ankle which is which has displaced little anteriorly so that Uh, would be a little uh, uh, giving a little inferior result but in a middle aged primary school teacher try to reconstruct obviously we have, yes. to, we have to try to reconstruct the whole thing because as because it is only 2 months so that we have to try for a refixation as near as we can go yeah yes okay. but even if you are doing still if you are doing a refixation revision fixation over and above revision fixation you would need Uh, osteotomy at the supra malleolar uh, level because there is a compression collapse uh, and a varus deformity yes 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 okay uh, this is my own case you can see it is 2004 this patient came to me after 3 months which was treated elsewhere with the plaster cast uh, how to proceed dr rajiv sha yeah this is this is i mean first is would first would be that uh, i hope this patient has no comorbidities and skin condition is good you get a yeah ct scan uh, okay. just yeah to see and then i think going through the original fracture is what uh, would be uh, possible in this case uh, osteotomy on the medial side you have to go on to uh, uh, into this plane also with your osteotomy make sure yeah, you have to tell because the we, nobody can see the uh, cursor so which That's if you are okay, okay, yeah okay, okay. your cursor cannot be seen on our oh, screen yeah sorry. yes yeah right okay when you are presenting it will be seen yes oh, okay okay so uh, there is an anterior uh, to posterior fracture line with a with an anterior fragment that also would require an osteotomy the medial sided osteotomy would be there this osteotomy would be there fibula will have to be brought out of the leg so the first thing would be the and don't don't start fixing from one side you do the osteotomy on both the sides or uh, and then you do the osteotomy of all the malunited fracture and then start fixation of one after another don't okay. start yeah and this yes. is the one where i'll start my fixation from uh, again from the fibula 
and uh, from the lateral side to the medial side. Okay. In 2004, you were uh, already working as a foot and ankle surgeon, sir, or you are a general no, practitioner? No, India, India, India saw the first qualified foot and ankle surgeon uh, in 2006. Okay, then uh, this is prior to that I have managed this case. Yeah, so <laughs> so, so our knowledge, knowledge about uh, that, all these things were not much at that time. So but you must have done something good, no question uh, about it. Yeah, so if you see the alignment is fine and the fibula is also, the uh, distal part is supporting the lateral side of the talus well. So I just uh, opened up the fibula Mm. and got the alignment and just with a K wire and did a percutaneous osteotomy because ankle alignment as you can see earlier the ankle alignment was perfect so mm. i just did a supramanular osteotomy mm. and just fixed with K wires any comments no they're excellent because uh, you gone away from the joint above the level of the joint and you corrected it yes as long yeah. as you correct the axis and your Ankle is now well balanced, and this patient definitely would do good yes. for a long time. Uh, yeah, this is uh, 14 weeks after the. Uh, yeah. I cannot read exactly. Is there, is there, is yes. there the only thing uh, I am worried about the kind of fixes and whether it will hold or not? And that is what is seen here. That yes. no, I have supplemented that with a BK cast. Okay. This is but after the plaster is, removal, I am showing the picture. But, but, sir, this has started going into. This has started going back into the deformity. If you see this axis, and yes. I, I, yeah, my cursor is not seen to you, yeah. but if you see the axis in the last x-ray, AP x-ray, yeah. uh, it has started tilting. Okay, that anyway, probably that could be due to the tilt in the x-ray because if you see okay. the x-ray here, the tibia is here, here, whereas the tibia is tilted here into varus. That's why it probably, okay, anyway. Sir. Okay, uh, sir. This is the clinical picture when the plaster yeah, was removed. Is. Yes, yeah, it is good. It is good. Yes. Unfortunately, I don't have the further pictures with me. So this is uh, the final outcome, whatever the alignment, whatever we, I was talking about, just the alignment, which uh, yeah. has been restored back. Good job. Great job. Uh, this is a case uh, shared by Dr. Sachin Nagapurkar. He is working at Sancheti, uh, not Sancheti, he is working at Hardikar Hospital in Pune. It's a bilateral trimalleolar fracture, similar type. Both the fractures are identical type. Mm -hmm. The question is, how common is this? No, this, this is quite uncommon and he must report this case. Yes, that's what he's already planning. So, uh, i gone back, sorry. So, he has treated both this uh, side with... Uh, open reduction and internal fixation, again, identical way of putting, except there is one extra K wire on one side. That's the only change he has done. And uh, there is only one or two case reports available yeah. about this uh, at present. Okay. Sir, the most important thing in this, uh, if we go back one slide. Yes. Yeah. See, Fixation of the posterior malleolus because the whole ankle moves with the posterior malleolus. Nowadays, what is recommended is not from anterior to posterior, but from posterior, posterior side to anterior. you want to buttress it. So yes. that is what uh, should have been ideal. What is the mode of injury, sir, in this case? Uh, I'm not sure. He has not sent the, that details. Probably it should be a height. But, to fall but from this, height is the case, because, uh, yeah, yes. this is the case worth reporting. Yes. No, he's already planning to report this case. Okay. Uh, I'm showing a case. A doctor himself, an orthopedic surgeon himself has sent me this. This is Dr. Anand Shukla, uh, a 65 year diabetic patient uh, from uh, Uttar Pradesh. This is the, I'll give the brief history of this uh, person. This is my skyogram of the left ankle. Developed a surgical wound on my lateral malleolus in June 2010. Blind exploration for pus was as I had fever in Renukut. Renukut is a place in UP, Uttar Pradesh. He developed septicemia and diabetes mellitus and hypertension also subsequently noted. He was referred to Allahabad where debridement was done, extra articular K-wire fixation and 
vancomycin beads were used. POP baloney cast was given. After six weeks, beads were removed. K wires slipped out during removal of the plaster. After three months, crutches to walk was given. After five months, plastic baloney brace till date is using that. No discharge since healing till date. This is a X-ray he had sent it in. A, 2012, this X-ray has been taken. I asked for a new X-ray. I will show that little later. I am 64 years old now, diabetic and hypertensive, lyal neuropathic joint. Right foot is operated by plastic surgeon. No amputation, no discharge for last five years. Anything better can be done. This is today's picture. Hmm. The orthopedic surgeon himself, diabetic and 65 years old. Right. So uh, one option is that what he's already using is a brace, right? But yes. if he wants, uh, because there is, I don't think there is any infection now. Yes. He should, yeah, he should undergo, if at all he requires, he wants to undergo something, the better treatment would be a sound fusion. Because he has not sent us the standing x-rays. In standing x-rays, these patients, they have tendency towards virus or valgus. Because tibia has tendency to slip over the calcaneus. So, he requires a tibio calcaneus fusion. Tibio calcaneus fusion will not be good with the nail. Because in the nail, you have just one screw to be fixed in lateral to medial plane and one screw from posterior to anterior plane. So the best would be a lateral plate which would span from tibia to calcaneus. And the lateral plate which comes for a lateral ankle or a lateral TTC fusion has got five screws which you can put into the calcaneus. So over and above, over and above uh, uh, four or five screws into tibia, you put in another five screws into the calcaneus do the complete curatage of the area, pack it with uh, good cancellous bone grafts and also temporarily fix into another plane because he's a diabetic. Fix an anterior plate going from tibia right up to the midfoot, to the navicular. So a two-plane fixation of a plate, one plate anteriorly going from tibia to the navicular, another plate laterally from tibia to the calcaneus, curatage, clearance of the non-union and bone grafting could help him with a sound fusion and maybe his limb could be salvaged. Otherwise, the future of this limb uh, going forward is ulceration, deformity and bilonia. Yes. Dr. Neeraj Bijlani has one more question. Uh, also, do they have uh, that is ankle problem cases? Prolonged swelling over the ankle, which I feel patient keeps on asking again and again. So is there any solution for this type of swelling in the patient for their queries? So the solution is pre-information. In any foot and ankle patient whomsoever I'm operating, I always tell that patient that you are going to have long lasting venous edema for nine to 12 months. In fact, uh, in my, in my uh, file also, uh, this is mentioned that after this surgery of foot and ankle, you're going to have long lasting venous edema for about 12 months. So by and large, this settles down and they also do not remember that when it went off. But yes, we need to counsel them that it's going to remain there for 12 months. Yes. Uh, we have a congratulatory message from Dr. Anand Perira from Colombo. Great cases and fantastic dis discussion. Really appreciate uh, the work done by Dr. Rajiv Shah. That's what he has read. Uh, yes, Dr. Perira, if you are uh, listening to us, uh, we want you also on this uh, board sometime. So please prepare for that. Uh, uh, this is a case what I wanted to show earlier, that nail case. Uh, this was a five months old ankle injury. It was a talus fracture. I am showing little earlier because uh, we were discussing about the nail for uh, uh, ankle fusion, sir. So how do you go ahead? This is talus fracture with dislocation of the talar head posteriorly. So it was a five months old injury. Yes, so, correct. Yeah. So in my talus presentation, 
I have a case. Okay. Which, yeah. yeah. Who came so to then me? I'll, then I'll click quickly go through that. Yeah, you quickly because... go. I'll show that case what I did. It was four months old case referred to me from Tanzania. A young patient, fractured dislocation talus. Okay. No, no, we will hear that. Anyway, I'll finish because I want to show only the nailing part of that and the type of the nail. So this is a young patient, uh, less than 20, he was around 18 or 19, I'm not sure. So again, this case is done in 2012. So I denuded the distal part of the distal tibia, then curated out the uh, cartilage from the top of the talus. Then this is the guide wire passed from the ankle. This is the retrograde supracondylar nail which I have passed. This is the three, uh, one in the calcaneum, one screw in the calcaneum, one screw going across the talus, one just above the osteotomy site or the arthrodesis site. So this nail can be also used. Uh, proximally, I have not done any uh, locking. This is how the on table picture. This is, uh, uh, you can see that the curvature of the nail there is a slight curvature for the distal femur that I have put it in posteriorly so that I will get slight uh, because I am removing the part of the talus and part of the tibia. Foot clearance will be easy if there is a walking will be easy if the foot is in five degrees of equinus. I thought that is the reason why I kept in this angle. This is the immediate post operative x ray. This is a clinical picture at six weeks. Again, I had given plaster for six weeks. As you can see, at six weeks, I removed the plaster and started asking the patient to bear weight. This is about uh, one year down the line. Yes. Great. Rajiv, so the video. Yes. So I, I, I would have liked to salvage the uh, ankle. And yeah, if at all, you have to. Uh, you know, for a neglected talus fracture, if at all you have to sacrifice, sacrifice subtalar joint. Foot yes. and ankle orthopedics now, the concept is to salvage ankle as much as possible. As much as possible. So, a week back for a case where patient had a lost, I mean, almost patient had lost 60% of the medial side of talus with a fracture of neck of the talus, I put in a allograft on the medial side to reconstruct the body. And then body and neck were connected with the screws, plate and bone grafting. So the, but the moral of the story, because I, I could not get the talus of the similar size of that patient with an allograft, but I reconstructed the ankle joint. So at least I'm giving a good ankle and subtle can always be fused. So that is the, uh, trend that you try to salvage ankle as much as possible. Uh, with regards to, uh, uh, now do we, I don't think we have time to discuss neglected calcaneus and talus, maybe we yeah, might. That's, uh, I think we have time, if you are okay, we can continue, otherwise we can have it as a second part. Yeah, so, we can have it as a second part, but yes. I, would, I would like to show the, in view of your case, I would like yes. to show a case of, uh, and in view of uh, uh, the doxab uh, who had uh, lost uh, talus, yeah, uh, talus, yeah. Yes. So uh, joint. Yeah, yeah. I just want to show uh, one or two cases which are exactly similar but a different scenario. So, uh, Eva, sir, just one question, and probably I will yeah. ask. Yes, sir, ask please. That's My one then, though. Before the uh, availability of the this TTC nail, we are using the humerus nail even for the, your this uh, ankle fusions. Yes. Even I have presented that in the different meetings, or also there are I, there are few papers on the humerus nail for the ankle fusion. Have you ever, Siva? Have you ever used those humerus nail for your ankle fusion? Always you started with the supracondylar nails. Yeah, I have used only supracondylar nail because humerus nail. What we get is only eight millimeter. So yes. that is, uh, yeah, we don't get more than that. So that is a problem for uh, using in distal tibia, which is funnel shaped. So I prefer to use a supracondylar nail. Okay, Rajiv, have you ever used the humerus nail for your ankle? Uh, no, uh, uh, I have used this uh, tibia nail, uh, but I've never used the humerus nail for uh, uh, this fixation. Okay. 
so next day probably if you have the going to have the second part of this uh, this uh, neglected ones i may present few of my humorous nail with ankle fusion okay sure, great sure. yes be great to see that okay so uh, we can announce the next date also next friday we will do it sir friday will be okay with you uh ajisha okay. yeah you just okay. you can confirm next friday or next to next that friday part 2 uh, when well, you can check and let let later yeah, yeah. sure sure yeah. sure 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 okay so uh, let me start sharing my screen uh just two quick cases uh that was a beautiful end on view we could see the cannulation of the cannulated screw yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i just want to show okay how this is one thing when whenever you have a defect you showed the case where yes. there was a defect so defect i like to put in a lamina spreader yes and maintain the length and then i put a uh, fibular grafts okay and i yes. i pass a suture through the fibular graft i call it a bamboo hut technique so okay. one fibular graft i pass a ky wire then a suture fiber wire through that hole then a suture is tied around the graft hmm? and this three fibular struts are put at 12 o'clock 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock okay so medial anterior posterior and the lower end of the fibula comes as a live plate on the at 9 yes. o'clock yes and then you connect this with this threads and your nail is lying into the center and this is the type of nail which i have designed that you have a oblong hole in the calcaneus and this uh, normal hole in the tibia and then you put in a nut through the nail yes when and compress it nut, yeah yes. this compresses so all the fibular grafts are kept like that and then it is compressed so this defect maintain it with the lamina spreader put in the grafts tight with the sutures so that they don't get displaced and then you do the yes best. okay uh, can you tell me which company does this nail yeah matrix matrix yes. okay now this is the this is the case i wanted to discuss with respect to that dr sabs case yes now, this was a dentist of 24 years 3 days post trauma he presented to the orthopedic surgeon after compound injury compound injury was treated with debridement axial fixation and k wire by the index surgeon there was infection he did debridement number 1 it failed he did debridement number 2 he removed the k wire patient was toxic in a septicemia he was brought to me he was sent to me so i again went in i removed the dead bone and the defect of 12 cm was created and then i put in an elizaro external fixator started distracting with the corticotomy above and when the docking came in uh, he underwent multiple plastic reconstructions and at docking i again went in i put in the bone grafts and then this ultimately got united now this was after <laughs> 18 months of injury that this got united but i still wanted to protect it so i protected him with the brace for 15 months and then after 4 months after that protection 19 months he comes with the painless instability and fall and look at this this is the way the way oh sorry it's not working but when he stands whole of his ankle goes into valgus so with this poor skin condition and elizaro apparatus for 15 months and brace for 15 months with this kind of a non union what should be the option okay the orthopedic yeah, uh, surgeon has got uh, diabetes but he has no diabetes he is little young guy so i 
fraction it went in laterally put in a lateral plate did bone graft and this is the lateral plate and it went on to unite and he is now back he also got married so this is one option when you have a defect to do calcaneo tibial fusion yes so yes uh then one more case which we will keep it for next time sir other yes. <laughs> we don't show all the <laughs> yes. yes yes but the loss tell us hmm? yes temporarily put the cement spacer and then it this was at the end of four days that the relatives came with this talus and they said sir can you put it back and i went in and i got his 3d printed talus done and this was the 3d printed total talus replacement and the sutures were tied with the uh, soft tissues and with the talo calcaneal talo navicular joint with an entry approach and that's the moment total talus replacement yes anyway thank you very much so, yeah then we we have got a few more questions sir i'll uh, yes. uh, yes. start sharing the screen uh okay we are not at through because let me finish all the ankle cases sure. Uh, uh, sure, sure sure yes sure. correct sure. i just was thought of showing that case which was yes, four correct. months old dictated talus but probably uh, i it, it it was before the presentation uh, before i started the presentation so yes if uh, maybe we would show, we would show it next time yes uh, this is a a x-ray sent by one of the doctors from uh, delhi that is gurugram 60 years female physiologically good looks like 50 complaints of pain while walking on in the right foot history of trauma 11 years back was managed by a quack for 6 months by oil massage and dressing and pop plaster for 6 weeks uh, initially then not received any treatment but continue to have pain no progressively increasing over the last few years an examination antalgic gait tenderness along the midfoot and there is swelling no heel varus or valgus however he has hallux valgus on both the side for which he is asymptomatic was advised conservative in the form of injection and analgesics but want a final solution so this is what uh, we have so this patient had missed posterior process talus fracture which was extending into the body of the talus and now following that this patient has developed subtalar arthritis so the important questions two important questions should be asked to this patient how is your comfort while walking on uneven surface the most important complaint of this patient would be very a lot of difficulty in walking on uneven surface the second important question i would ask is what gives you more pain is it going down the stairs or coming up the stairs so it is the going down the stairs which gives more pain than coming up the stairs so this patient has got subtalar arthritis and it is because of the mal united uh, 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 body fracture of the talus and this patient requires subtalar fusion it would be in situ subtalar fusion if i don't have the uh, axial view of the calcaneus but as dr sab has written that there is no varus or valgus of the heel this patient simply requires subtalar fusion in situ subtalar fusion okay these are the mri which is suggest of only subtalar arthritis there is nothing much we are gained by the mri i am planning to do triple arthrodesis through do in a dilemma whether to go for subtalar alone or triple i think that you have already answered yeah. you will be doing most important, most important message i want to convey 
is that in foot and ankle orthopedics, the concept is try to salvage as many joints as possible. In a triple arthrodesis also, we have now stopped doing calcium cuboid fusion. So it is simply a double arthrodesis, subtalon and talonavicular. So don't think of triple arthrodesis for any problem in foot and ankle. Whatever joints are symptomatic, you only do fusion of that joint. If you are confused whether the joint is uh, uh, is symptom is asymptomatic or whether the joint is symptomatic and whether I need to do something, if you are in doubt, go yeah. with an ultrasound guided or image intensifier guided Injection. differential injections into the joint and decide which joint is giving you the problem. Even from the lateral exit, your calcaneal cuboid and the your talon avicular is not in not looking that bad. Not looking that bad. Bad, yeah. yeah. Not needed. The only thing, only thing, only caveat in this patient is that this patient has also got lot of posterior pronounced uh, malunion of the posterior process of the talus. So this patient would require a little longer approach longer sinus tarsi approach, which goes posteriorly. And you will also need to excise this. I think my cursor is seen here. No, no, my oh, cursor is seen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So can yeah. you take it to the posterior portion of talus? Yeah. So that part requires to be excised because ankle is good. So if that is not excised, then while with the subtalar fusion, when patient does dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, there would be... Uh, Teethering, there would be rubbing of this bone with the flexor hollis longus, and patient would have flexor hollis longus tendinitis. Okay. Uh, Dr. Dayanaji has asked a question. Tip of the lateral balance is not seen. For him, I am showing this. Sir, this is the shadow of the finger has fallen. This is the where the lateral malleus is. It's perfectly in position. Yes. Yeah. Nice observation. Okay. Yes. Uh, I am showing an interesting case. It's a fresh case in a young boy, all from height. Uh, you can see there is an injury uh, across the uh, epiphysis, Salter Harris type 3. Hmm. Then talus fracture also. Can you make, sir? Yes, yes, absolutely. There is a fracture of the talus. How to approach? This is a young child uh, around that. Uh, 13 or 14. Yeah. Obviously, if you have an access to CT scan, that is going to solve a lot of your problem. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. This clearly delineates say, all the fractures. All the fractures. You also have a post Yes. And obviously, this child is going to be left out with a lot of uh, uh, developmental issues. Good problem. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, there, is, there is impaction of the epiphysis on the medial side also. Yes, yeah. 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 Medial, yeah, medial side. Yeah, this is. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So how do you treat any uh, anything? Swarnendo, I will ask Swarnendo. Yes, yes, because this is as... And I am coming to you also. Yes. <laughs> okay. Should I answer? Uh, yes, so Swarnendo first, then next, then uh, last, uh, Dr. Rajisha. Yes, this, from, from the CT scan, like here, all the pictures, axial, coronal, and the sagittal, you see, it's a, it's a medial injury is there, and also the posterior injury is there, and the which the posterior injury, whatever is there, is mostly the fragment. If we see, this is the medial side fragment. So I will take a long posterior medial approach so that I can do all the medial job from the long posterior medial approach. And for the talus, I think we have to take a separate incision on the lateral side. Like we like, like we do the uh, double approach for the talar talar fracture. So I will do a extended posterior medial approach for the posterior malleolus and the medial comminuted fragments and the lateral approach for the lateral talar body fracture. Okay, uh, Jent, anything else you want to add? No, I don't think I have much to add to what Doctor Samantha okay. has already said. Yes. Okay, Gurunath, do you know about this case, Swapnil Kotadia's case? Uh, if you are knowing this case, then you are not eligible to answer. Thank you. His uh, mic okay. is off. Okay. Gurunath's mic is off. Okay. Gurunath's mic is off. Gurunath is a no, I, I, will, I will not talk, sir. I know the case. Okay. okay. That's, that's, right. Right. that's Yes. Right. Okay. Then Rajusha. 
Yes, yes. Anything? So, yes. See, obviously, this the first and important thing which you need to counsel to the parents is that this child might end up with uh, a growth, growth disturbances. Uh, yeah. Growth disturbances, right? So you need to uh, uh, you need to fix your fractures in such a manner that as far as possible you don't cross the epiphysis. Yes. <clears throat> so and you have a, 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 a play where you can uh, avoid crossing the epiphysis and fix this uh, uh, medial and the okay my cursor is not seen to you medial yes. and posterior yeah yeah but the it, most important is, one yeah the most important one to me is the talus fracture is the talus fracture because the talus is the one if and you re reconstruct ankle very nicely, but you don't reconstruct talus, then also this child is going to have problem. Yes. So for the talus fracture, the dictum is wherever you have depression, that is the side from which you need to go first. The dictum for the osteotomy is wherever you have combination, wherever you have depression, that is the side from which you go for osteotomy. So here, the medial malleolus fracture is not going to help us for fixing the talus. Otherwise, if there is a medial depression, we'll fix the talus fracture first and then we'll fix the medial fracture because there is a natural osteotomy for you. So herein you go, as Swar Swarinandu has said, I'm going to go with the lateral approach, but keep my lateral approach in such a manner that if I find some difficulty, I might have to convert into the lateral osteotomy. Then I should be ready with that extension. Otherwise, yes. by the lateral approach, I think we should be able to go in, uh, go in and elevate that fragment. And there's something which is there uh, is also a lateral talar process or a small piece of lateral talar process. Yes, that is also fractured. That also requires to be fixed nicely because that has got an attachment of the capsule ligamentous structure. So that will require reduction the taller piece would require lifting and filling up of the grafts. And if you are not able to really get trajectory for your Herbert screw, you might have to do a fibular lateral manual osteotomy. Yes. When you're doing the lateral manual osteotomy, you will cut the AITFL and ATFL and you must repair after you close your osteotomy. And I would also like to see other CT scan views, but this is what... Yes, okay. Uh, this is done in 2013, and the patient is also 13 years old. So now he should be 20 years by now. Uh, treated by my colleague, Dr. Swapnil Kotadia from Sholapur only. Uh, yes. As you said, he has passed a wire only in the epiphysis, not across the epiphysis, and percutaneously he speaks the metaphysial beak also with the horizontal uh, screw just above the epiphysial plate, and also epiphysis the fracture of the medial malus through the epiphysis fixed with a screw. There is one more screw subsequently added. You can see there are two screws. And any comment at this stage? No, I think good. Yes. Very good. But then the fibula, then the talus. Yes. So this is a percutaneously, these are the incisions which has been done. Then uh, Swarpar Swarnendo. Arthroscopy was inserted and talus fracture was elevated. And as you can see, Fantastic. it came in alignment. It was again fixed with another percutaneous screw. And the last fragment, the lateral beak, that was also fixed Percutaneous. with another screw. So this is the final on table picture. Excellent. 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 Medial side and lateral side. These are all the just the incisions. This is eight months post-operative picture. Was there any bone grafting done underneath that? No, no, no. It, no. Nothing, nothing, nothing. It's only bringing it back in alignment and fixing with the screw. That's all. Mm. Yes. So no bone grafting, nothing. The, the fracture was not at all open. Just by screws, it has been inserted. Great. This is the final. Uh, I have seen the final video, but I don't have it right now. I didn't ask Dr. Swapnil Kotadi also. I thought I may not be. Uh, yeah, this is the final function. Yes. Great. Great. Okay. I think uh, we are 
done a wonderful job. We are already uh, crossed two and a half hours, though we started about 10 minutes late because of the problem with our uh, network. So, but uh, we could make up and we could cover at least the ankle fractures uh, in the allotted three hours. We, friends, we are going to have uh, Dr. Dr. Rajiv Shah for uh, one more session where he will be covering his uh, malunited talus fractures and calcaneal fractures and many more uh, such injuries. I would like to thank Dr. Rajiv Shah for uh, you, having you, spent so much of time preparing for this talk and uh, in, in spite of his busy schedule, as I said earlier, he's a high volume surgeon and also high, uh, highly involved uh, entrepreneur looking after three hospitals. So uh, this is a uh, uh, for tomorrow, tomorrow evening, we have already recorded a talk from Dr. Sivaji Choudhury from Kolkata. He will be talking about fracture neck femur in quest of an optimally efficient method. Uh, he will be showing a video of quadratus muscle uh, pedicle bone grafting. Uh, he has a wide series. Uh, in the last 25 years, he has uh, operated about 180 fresh and old uh, transverical fractures with his... Uh, technique, muscle, pedicle graft, and beautiful re uh, results he has shown. Uh, we had Dr. Dinesh Kale from Belgaum as panelist, Dr. Milin Joshi from Solapur as panelist, and uh, Dr. Jain Sen, who is also today with us as panelist, along with uh, Neeraj and Ashok Sham. Tomorrow evening, we are starting live streaming that at 5 o'clock, and from 7 to 8, after the talk is over, uh, you can ask any questions on any of the trauma groups. Uh, you can send the questions to me. I will uh, be in touch with Dr. Shivaji Choudhury and his answers, I will pass it on to you. It's not a direct uh, video like this because we have already recorded this talk. So, so don't miss a beautiful presentation on muzzle pedicle graft tomorrow evening. Friends, I would like to thank today's panelists, Dr. Swarnendu Samantha, Dr. Jain Sen and Dr. Gurunath Vache for uh, the excellent job they did in uh, coordinating some of the cases and uh, discussion in a proper direction. I also would like to thank Neeraj Bijlani for actively involved uh, during the whole course of this talk and uh, asking questions. Not but not the least, Dr. Ashok Sham for the beautiful platform of Ortho TV for all of us to have a gained lot of knowledge. Uh, if there is anybody to say anything, otherwise we are saying bye bye. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank bye you, bye. Sir. Yes, Neeraj, you excellent, talks. excellent program. Neeraj, excellent program, sir. As usual. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you very much.